there and welcome to the Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. I'm your host, Vidas Pinkavichus. Welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing podcast number 89. This is Sunday, April 9, 2017, and today's guest is Wolf von Ross a young and talented organist student from Ball State University, Indiana. He took an interest in the organ when he was about three years old. When uh, he was six, uh, he started playing the piano. Throughout those years, Wolf taught himself about the organ and methods. Uh, By the time he was 15, he started taking organ instruction. Now, uh, Wolf is uh, 20 years old and currently studying uh, music and organ performance with Raul Prieto Ramirez at Ball State University. He's also taking outside formal instruction from Travis Person, who teaches at the University of Indianapolis. Wolf currently serves as assistant organist uh, at uh, Broadway United Methodist Church in Indianapolis. He also works as a solo freelance concert organist and plays uh, in an organ duo team called Two Shamats with Jacob Mintz. Wolf loves to study works from Josef Reinberger to Von Williams, from Olivier Messiaen and Louis Vierne to underrated composers like Grégoire Roland and others. Wolf also enjoys learning about improvisation in all kinds of styles. His favorite composer is Pierre Cochereau. And he likes to discover orchestra and piano work that had been turned into organ pieces and enjoys transcribing works himself. In this conversation, among other things, we talk about starting learning the piece, extremely slow tempos, and performances for organ duet. This is a particularly inspiring conversation. Let's go to the show. So, Wolf, thank you so much for joining this conversation. I'm so delighted we're connecting from different continents. You are in Indiana, right? In in America, and I'm in in Lithuania on the Baltic Sea. You are at 11 a.m., right? On uh, on Monday, I am in the evening, uh, 6 p.m. So oh, really? we're very far uh, uh, from each other, but we'll be talking about the things that we both enjoy and love. Organ playing, organ improvisation, your organ practice methods, all those things. Thank you so much and welcome to the show. Oh, thank you very much for having me. I'm very honored that you wanted to interview me. Very fun. Excellent. Uh, can we start uh, with, by telling us a story? From your childhood, you remember when you were um, six years old, you started those musical journeys. Could you, could I did. you enlighten us? Well, um, it started when I was about three, actually. Um, my parents, my dad actually was a priest in an Episcopal church, and my house that we, before we lived in was a parish house, and it was right next to the church. And my crib was actually right next to the sanctuary. And every now and then I could hear the organist practicing uh all kinds of works. I remember, I remember some of them. Some of them are Reinberger pieces. Some of them are VM pieces. Um, and that would put me to sleep or it would just have me trance, uh, in a trance, um, enjoying the music and just, you know, introduce me to the whole world of organ music. Wonderful. Wonderful. So music has this calming effect, right? Right from the yeah. beginning. Uh, lullabies. Uh, did, did your mom uh, sing lullabies for you? Ah, uh, she did. Yeah, there was. It was. Um, did, yeah. Those things disappearing here fast uh, in in today's modern culture, you know, and uh, yeah. and people don't like to sing anymore. Did you notice know that, Wolf? I didn't know that actually. No. Yeah. So we, we would rather listen to music, but to participate actively, it's it's not that common, unless you are uh, in a choir, right? Uh, yeah. uh, or going to church and uh, you love to sing hymns. Uh, then of course. It's wonderful to to join. I I see you are in a beautiful church. Can you yeah. can you share with us what kind of church is this? Um, this is Broadway Methodist Church in Indianapolis downtown. Um, mm-hmm. I'm actually sitting at the organ console at the moment. Um, the organ in front of me is a Reynolds pipe organ, built in 2001. It has three keyboards, um, 54 ranks, and I'm not sure any pipes. I think around 2,000 pipes or something like that. 
and it has about um, I don't want to say about over fifty stops, maybe under that forty something mm -hmm. stops. Wonderful instrument, and it sounds like like the acoustics should be also very good. Oh yeah, it's it's a big, it's a pretty big church for good acoustics, good mm -hmm. echo and all that. Wonderful, wonderful. So uh, when you were uh, six, you started, of course, playing piano, right? So what was your first experience on the piano? Yeah. First experience on the piano, um, I'll be honest, I didn't like it. <laughs> as no, 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 no. Because um, it took a lot of uh, durability and practice to be able to learn how to read the notes. And it was frustrating at times um, with the piano music. And I mm. just feel like, Oh, I couldn't do this anymore. Oh, it's, I'm not good at this. Then I started buckling down later and eventually got to being, wow, this is actually really fun. A lot of good things happened there. Wonderful. So, yes, um, uh, sometimes piano playing can be dry, right? If, especially yeah. if your uh, teacher um, makes you play scales and arpeggios and dry exercises. Uh -huh. You have to play those things. I did. I played so my I hands exercises. That was one of the reasons, right? Yeah. When it became boring a little bit. Yeah. But of course, it fascinates the, the grand repertoire, Chopin, Liszt, right? All those oh, romantic yes. Beethoven uh, people love. Even even uh, child uh, uh, pianist uh, kids basically love great music, right? And they oh, don't yes. yeah, enjoy playing dry exercises. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can agree with you on that too. And uh, uh, what happened later, uh, uh, Wolf? Uh, did you, uh, how did you find yourself in the organ career path? How did you start uh, learning organ professionally? Well, um, I started teaching myself because um, there weren't very many teachers that wanted to teach me or knew how to play the organ. So in my dad's church, um, I uh, decided to go up to the church and take a look around and see what the instrument was actually about. And I was very afraid because I didn't know what was going to happen. I thought it was going to growl at me. I didn't know if it was going to um, make a loud sound at me. And my dad came up and he said, well, turn on the organ. And I started playing around with it. And eventually I got to thinking, wow, this is really one of the coolest things I've ever seen. And eventually later on, I uh, discovered new organs like a, an organ down in southern Indiana called St. Minard uh, is an arch abbey and has one of the largest scolding and wood organs you'll ever see. And when I first encountered that organ, I thought, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. And it was so big. It was very beautiful to um, uh, discover. And that was actually my, my mainly childhood organ uh, because that's the place I would go down and relax because it's a really peaceful place to go. And people were so friendly there and let me try out the instrument. And it was just one of the most coolest experiences in the world. I thought I wanted to do this. I wanted to do this very thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, the grandeur yeah. of the instrument, of course, is, uh, can make a, cast a spell on you, right? Right yes. away from the beginning. And uh, it's a love from first sight, basically, for more, yeah. more people. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Good. And you started playing this uh, this beast, right? This big organ, right? And uh, uh, what happened later, right? Uh, you are, uh, what, uh, about uh, 19 years old, right? I just turned 20 yesterday, actually. Today? Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Wolf. Yes, I've seen uh, congratulations uh, people send to you on Facebook. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> our, our conversation will go live uh, later in a couple of weeks. So you will be well in your 20s, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Two, two weeks in, I'm still nervous about it. <laughs> so h how did you celebrate today this, this wonderful... Uh, are you going to celebrate uh, because it's morning yet, right? Yeah, um, I'm planning to celebrate. Yes, I didn't, I didn't get to celebrate because I was writing a very irritating paper for college, and I didn't like that. <laughs> so, but I made it up by eating cheesecake, and that was pretty cool. And this week, I'm going to try and uh, uh, celebrate more. I'm going to try and get some music in, um, uh, try and go out somewhere and experience some good things, all that stuff. Get some organ playing in, of course. 
you know what i am some sometimes i am i like to wish people who who are celebrating their birthdays to go out and play the music of a specific composer who was born uh, on on the anniversary of of this year for example uh, if you are in in your 20 right uh, 20 years uh -huh. old so probably a good idea would be to play somebody who was uh, born uh, in uh, uh, 1920 1820 1720 you see 1620 mm -hmm. those people or even uh -huh. somebody from 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 the 20 20th century right 20th century do you like yeah. um, 20th century music book I do. I like a lot of modern composers, and especially today's stuff. It's very interesting. Yeah, you, know, that you, you like uh, uh, Ralph von Williams, right? And even Olivia Messian and uh, Louis Vierne. Oh, yes. Those are one of my favorites. Yes. What fascinates you about, uh, let's say, Ralph von Williams? Von Williams? Um, he's, I grew up with him mainly. Uh, my whole family loves the guy, and I love listening to his music and studying his uh, works. I'm more of like a English romantic person, and studying like English cathedral music in choirs and in organ, mm -hmm. and it just so fascinates me. Like I like to listen when I go to sleep because it sends me into a good trance when I go to sleep. It makes me think about good dreams, and he's just one of the coolest composers I've ever heard of in, or in the orchestra world and the organ world. Mm -hmm. Good old. Uh, Wolf, I just played uh, a concert uh, a couple of m months ago when I played uh, uh, a beautiful hymn setting uh, on uh, on an ancient uh, Welsh tune by Von Williams called mm -hmm. Rosimed. Do you know this this beautiful um, gentle melody and yeah. uh, and wonderful, fantastic uh, setting in G major by Von Williams. So my listeners were very, very enjoying enjoying it very much. So I guess you're very right. Uh, your your love for this composer is is wonderful. I agree. Uh, my favorite uh, his, his uh, hymn settings, right? We all like oh, yeah. to sing the the bass line, moving bass lines are wonderful in his hymn settings. Oh yes, and I'm, one of my favorite pieces actually in his music is actually the Talos theme. Um, mm -hmm the theme variation on it. Um, it's actually right here in front of me. Well, someone, someone transcribed it for organ, actually, and I thought, wow, this would be kind of cool to learn for organ. There's not really much transcriptions on that. It's all for orchestra. And I saw this uh, Palestine, and I was like, oh, wow. This would be really relaxing to play and to um, make my own piece for the organ. Mm -hmm. At least I can... Wonderful. Yes, and of course, uh, other composers like uh, Olivier Messian, right? People yeah. like Messian probably uh, will be remembered for centuries, right? In in organ circles, and not only in organist circles, because he wrote for many other instruments, but especially for organ, right? Oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. What kind of pieces that. do you think the most uh, that written by by Olivier Messian? Late early music uh, or middle uh, period? Uh, what, can you describe a little bit? Um, more? What's your favorite? Um, I like a lot of his um, out of organ works, like the Apercio de Ligis de Altano, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, uh -huh. this, is, this is one of the earliest pieces. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I love his uh, La Beco Celeste, and I'm currently oh. learning. The first piece, I think, that he wrote, Le Banquet Celeste, very, very slow, right? Extremely mm -hmm. slow. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the yeah. slower you play, the better, actually. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It only has four or three pages, right? But it should last about eight minutes. Okay. Seven or eight minutes. Mm -hmm. I've very, heard it play very last year, and it's like, oh, I thought it was slower than that. You know, uh, you know it, it should sound like meditation, where there are no time limits. It's like like being in eternal peace, you know. Uh, that's the, the message behind this, this uh, 
with this composition and it's actually very very difficult to play that slow right because our mind wants to wander around and wants to play a melody when uh -huh. you go to, it's like you have a direction phrasing and uh, there is none of that in in this banquet celeste because it's all very static and very meditation like wow mm -hmm. i don't know that yeah, uh, so if you ever play this piece, play extremely slow and try to be in one moment, in one in one beat, maybe in one note. Um, don't look ahead, so to say. Don't don't plan for things. Just be in a constant uh, focus. It's very very difficult, yeah. actually. So although so, the technical things are not difficult, but uh, but mental yeah. things are very difficult. So let me try it here quick. So I could feel about this slow and take it about. Or is it slower than that? Yeah. You are trying to play the beginning, right? Yeah. Remember the place when the pedal line comes in. Yeah. Somewhere right. in the middle. Then uh, it should sound like like drops of rain, very very smooth. Even slower, perhaps. Even slower. Oh, really? Yeah, especially if you have good acoustics in your church, then you can can allow to do, to play it slower. And uh, as I say, it's very difficult to make this piece not boring, you know? Yeah. Because <laughs> your listeners might feel, will fall asleep, right? <laughs> it's a soft piece, though, too. But, but believe me, if you stay focused in each, in each drop of, of rain, in, in each note of the pedal line, uh -huh. then they will also become... Mm, uh, uh, enchanted by your playing also mm -hmm. so wonderful yeah. let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, about um, your love of uh, Louis Vierne right uh, did yeah. you play some of the pieces by Vierne for what did, have you played uh, compositions by Vierne before oh yeah I have I've uh, mm -hmm. learned his uh, preambule which is one of my favorites I'm currently learning his uh, Claire de la Lune, which is by far the most beautiful piece of his I've ever heard. It's uh, mesmerizing, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's a wonderful preparation for his longer works, right? Like like uh, mm -hmm. uh, parts from his uh, symphonies. Uh, oh, yeah. His symphonies are very long, but they are all have movements. And you don't have to play entire symphony right away, but you can choose a shorter movement when you're ready and expand yeah. your ex uh, experience this way. Wonderful. So, so how do you practice uh, um, Claire de Lune? Uh, can you tell us a little bit of your practice methods? How do you learn uh, uh, um, uh, manual parts and pedal parts, how you memorize. Is it difficult? Uh, yeah, getting the notes down is pretty difficult on your own paper. And then eventually if you learn it and see long enough, you can memorize it pretty good. Um, the way I practice it right now, uh, I take things really slowly, very slowly, because it's not easy to put out hands together in the first time. It looks easy, but it's actually really not. Um, mm -hmm. So some might disagree with me on that, but I don't know. Um, the way I do it is start out with the uh, left hand and take it very slowly. And then bring, bring left, right, the right hand. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. I spent the wrong button off. <laughs> but mm -hmm. yeah, I thought it was actually. So, Wolf, can you tell us a little bit? Um, do you like playing separate parts, like left hand, pedals alone? 
Yeah, I like playing left hand uh, a little more better because it's, it's the harder parts, the accompaniment. And the right hand is more the melody, which is a lot easier to learn. So if you get the left hand down, um, it's easier to come in with the right hand. Mm-hmm, and then pedaling mm-hmm. is, a lot, is a lot different too. Um, you got to know when to come in with those and coordinate between your left and your feet to be able to hit the proper notes and the, uh, the timing, basically. Do you like Wolf uh, adding pedal preparation techniques to your playing? Like uh, pre doing it or like? Uh huh. Yes, preparing your feet and placing them in advance in the uh, right, uh, right, um, right pedals, but not playing, but uh, let them rest. And then, yeah. when comes when time comes to play, you simply slide to the next. And 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 you constantly preparing for the next note with each foot. It's a very powerful uh, technique. It basically pro- automates your playing. Yeah, that's what Professor Ello teaches actually. Um, to put your feet mm-hmm. on the next note coming, to look ahead, and to get it in preparation to push it for the next measure or whenever it comes in. Mm-hmm. And it's actually pretty really helpful. It's it's a little tricky to do because you know what's going to come next if you're sight reading the piece. But if you know and practice it and memorize where things need to go, it's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. And um, you mentioned your organ professor. Can you tell us a little bit of him, about Uh, him? Raul is a renowned international organist. He's a Spaniard. I actually got my white organ shoes just because I like the guy so much and it kind of inspired me. (laughs) Well, him and Cameron Carpenter a little bit. But... um, yeah, he's really he's really friendly. He knows what he's doing. He gets a lot out of you. He uh, he loves the social hall organ too. That's a thing. <laughs> it's, it's really a good organ too to play on. So he is very supportive, right? Yeah, he's supportive. He's supportive. Yes. And is he is he, is he strict with his uh, teaching methods, or he uh, does he, is he gentle or strict? Uh, uh, you, American way or European way, so to say? Um, uh, I actually didn't pay attention to that. Um, he actually might be a little bit of both because, of course, he wants to get it right, but the gentle method um, probably isn't the best way to go if you want to get like something out of somebody. And he does that with me, I think, that in a good way. So I can uh, move a little faster in my playing and know what I need to, what I need to know, basically. So he's, pretty, he's pretty kind of both because he knows my styles and what I do. And yeah, he's, he's pretty good. Uh huh. So, you know, uh, many teachers in, in Europe are quite strict, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a tradition to be strict mm-hmm. in Europe. Like French professors, um, people should not argue with, with professors in, in Europe, you know. And they are very strict and say, you should do this and. Uh, and you do it, right, without questioning. In America, um, students are encouraged to question, right? And because yeah. uh, you're constantly questioning professors, they are explaining and motivating you, right? Giving yeah. the reasoning behind uh, their uh, directions, right? And you become uh, a little bit different person uh, with this type of teaching. Yeah, from my from out of experience with Raul, he's pretty much both, I think. He tells you, if I uh, do this something right, he'll say, no, this is wrong. And he tells you, me uh, another method of how to doing it. And it works because he knows what I need to do in a certain piece, like a frog piece, basically, or um, Claire de Lune. He, he did teach me different methods on how to play them so I can learn exactly what comes next or how to play this right. Pretty good stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, Wolf, uh, can you share with us what is your dream in organ playing right now? Do, do you have a dream? Of course, you have. Can <laughs> Can you share? What's um, your dream? My dream, I think, right now is to uh, graduate college um, in performance organ playing. I would like to be a recitalist um, mm-hmm. and a cathedral organist, if possible, in way in the future, if that happens. But uh, Mainly, main thing right now is to be a recitalist, I guess, for organ playing. Mm-hmm. Would you like to play in church uh, more often, too? 
yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun to do. I like to, to hopefully work in an Episcopal church in the future too, because that's my denomination. And I love the music of the Episcopal church, Anglican church. Um, right. And yeah, that's probably my goal at the moment. Uh-huh. Do you, do you have some challenges? What is the most challenging thing for you in, in, in organ playing right now? Most challenging thing, um, I want to say starting a piece, like a new piece. Mm-hmm. Um, it takes a while to learn, and it's not easy to uh, coordinate the first time. Uh, so yeah, I'm just trying to get that basis, basis down, and sight mm-hmm. reading is the main thing, too. Trying to get that underway, and yeah, starting right uh, because yeah. when when you start, when you know the basics, you can keep going, and basically the piece uh, learns by itself, right, by repetition. Yeah. But the basic uh, idea when you first start, uh, sometimes you don't even know how it sounds, right? If it's a yeah. very new, rare, uh, seldom performed piece, you don't know how it sounds. You have to discover it by yourself, by sight reading, by taking it apart, basically, right? Yeah. So do you like analyzing your music? I do. I like to listen to the music I'm uh, trying to learn and follow along with the score, see what comes in with the fingerings or how someone plays this. Um, A harder part for me is trying to figure out, like, the faster notes in a piece, like, trying to figure out... uh, how do I not scrub up my fingers in this part? Or uh, how do I not get my feet scrambled up in the pedaling parts in certain mm-hmm. uh, areas? Take it very slowly mm-hmm. and just, you know, go do on you, with it. Do you uh, uh, write, write down fingering and pedaling uh, yourself? I do. I use the heel toe thing, um, numbers and all that stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm, you do. Uh, do you find it boring and long, tedious job? Um, I don't want to say it's boring, but it is frustrating at times. You know, uh, trying to get it underway. Mm-hmm. But it's in uh, it's an investment, I think, right? Because yeah. you you work very hard at the beginning. You put down uh, all those difficult fingerings and pedalings. But then later you can reap rewards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because of that. Many people uh, play without um, predetermined fingerings, right? Uh, just uh, accidental fingerings. Do right. you think that this type of practice is healthy? Um, I think it's pretty good. It depends on the learning style, though, too. If they want to learn a certain way and that's best for them, I'd say go for it. That's actually all fingerings. I'd say go for that, too, if they want to learn that. Um, it's, it really depends on their method, basically, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Everyone probably should discover their own favorite practice method. Don't you agree? Yeah. I would say, yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever works for me might not work for you, right? And yeah. whatever works for you might not work for your organ professor, uh, because he is different, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. True. And, um, uh, of course, uh, but we have some things in common, right? Uh, We we all have ten fingers and two feet, (laughs) right? That makes us similar. And uh, But how we practice, we might approach it from different angles, probably. Mm Mm-hmm. I know some people uh, who, who who practice peace inside out or, or backwards, you know, f- taking it from the, from the basically last measure, then going okay. to the first measure this way. Yeah. And actually, I should take the harder parts first in a piece of music so I can get that um, mm-hmm. memorized easier. And the easier parts I take last because that will be a lot faster to go through. So that if you get the harder parts, you'll be able to play the easy parts with it. Very, very uh, smoothly, like it's like playing fugues, right? Uh, fugues uh, usually come yes. in one by one, and it's easy. But when yeah. the pedals come in, that's difficult. Sometimes people start from the beginning, but probably it's better to start where the difficult pedal parts are. Yeah, I'm trying to learn the Bach Prelude and Fugue in D major, the BWV uh, 532. 
that's one of the hardest pieces I ever uh, encountered with Bach, especially the pedal parts, because it's actually the basis of the piece is actually very simple, but the basology of the piece is very difficult. In my opinion, I think. File thirty two D major, right? Yeah, it's the Mm-hmm. That, that thing, yeah. Wonderful. I I played it a long time ago and I, I think I will going to repeat this piece this year. It's it's difficult. Uh, are you playing this piece right now? Yeah, I'm trying to learn that myself on my own timing because actually this is one of the pieces I've always wanted to learn next to a few Reinberg pieces. So, uh, how long do you think it will take to you to master this uh, few? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Or that's more? A good, that's a good question. Five, maybe a few months or a few months. Mm-hmm. hopefully. Probably me too. Um, my next recital is in, in one month and I had a secret hope to be able to master BWV 532 by that time. Mm-hmm. But it, it takes too much time. It really does. It's so it may be complicated. Six months from now. Six months, yeah. Mm-hmm. To be to be secure, you know, and relaxed. Because, as you say, it, it's 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 wonderful piece, and we should enjoy our playing, right? And not be stressed out about oh, yes. difficult pedal parts, right? Difficult sequences, absolutely. Scales up and down, you know. It's mm-hmm. it's so hard not to be frustrated too um, when you're trying to play a piece. It's so hard not to be frustrated because you know you're gonna mm-hmm. play things perfectly. Mm-hmm in your mind, in your, uh, for me, I have anxiety sometimes, and I think, I got to do this perfectly, or, uh, you know, I'm going to freak out, uh, you know, and the point is, though, you, know, you don't have to be perfect in the organ playing, you just have to calm down and play what you feel in the music, you have to play, um, play with your knowledge, so to speak, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. your feelings. Yeah, yeah. I'm not so stressed out about it. Yeah. So, so, at which, at which level, level you are, are uh, with this uh, D major, Prelude and Fugue, uh, Wolf, right now? Are you in the beginning stages or in the middle stages? I'm trying to exit the beginning stages at the moment. I'm, I've gotten into it, but it's still kind of a beginning process. With uh, mm-hmm. Not the first part, but uh, when all the parts come in, with the pedal, the hands, and the, yeah, coordination. And the prelude is not easy too. Uh, oh, it's, no. <laughs> it, it's very virtuosic sometimes, uh, right? Yeah. So uh, another thing uh, which helps me with uh, is analyzing the piece. Do you like analyzation, analysis? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, figure out, figuring out the keys, key changes, modulations, sequences, um, uh, yeah. Chord progressions, finding out all all those intricate music theory things that you that you learn in college. Mm, the chord progressions aren't easy either. Um, another piece that I'm trying to do is the uh, the improvisation from Tournament on a Tedeum, and there are a lot of chord progressions mm-hmm. in there that's not easy to figure out. Uh, it looks easy because it's a straightforward chord, but in a sense, it's really complicated to try and figure out and be able to play at certain speed and just you just take it really slowly at first and then eventually put it all together with that. Mm-hmm. So it's not really mm-hmm. a fast piece. It's more of a relaxing, meditative thing, but not, not really like a toccata at all. It's more yeah, meditative. So, do you know, we have one thing in common. Actually, a few, a few more, but uh, one thing that I want to um, uh, point out. You and I like to play organ duets. <laughs> yes. I play with my wife, and you're playing with, uh, with Jacob Mintz, right? I am, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's my bro. So can you, tell us, can you tell us the story behind this, uh, the, the theme, Two Shamads? Well, um, it started out actually here. Uh, 
he Jacob actually contacted uh, the director of music here um, if he could come and see the organ a while ago, and he AJ told me about it. He's a director. Uh, he told me about some guy who was coming from Peru. I'm like, Peru? You mean the country or the city? I'm like, oh, I don't know. He said he's coming from Peru, and I said, okay, I'll be here. And eventually, when I first met him, I thought he's playing with a cicada at that age. I'm like, he's amazing. And I thought, oh, wow, we should do something together. And eventually, uh, we've ended up um, relating and having things in common, and we ended up having a best friendship, and we're, and we're doing things to this day. And I'm very happy that we're doing that. It's one of the best things, I think, in my life right now. I couldn't agree more. Playing with somebody you enjoy, uh, with a friend like that, right, is a very... Mm -hmm rewarding experience not only musically but emotionally right you start to yeah. feel the other person uh, better uh, like uh, like the other night we played with osha my wife uh, a recital for four hands you uh, a, f a couple of pieces uh, uh, basically brandenburg concertos by bach uh, transcriptions oh, wow. and you know after that we were talking about how we feel each other well how don't we we don't even have to rehearse, you know, or mm -hmm. look at when to start, when to end. We feel, we breathe together. So it's the same with you and Jacob, probably, right? You're starting yeah. to feel. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. And uh, it's it, it connects you. The music connects to people, right? Yeah. It builds mm -hmm. friendships, it builds relationships, you name it. Music can do anything, like... Yeah, and if I you think. mess up something, right, the other person uh, can support you or can criticize you. How J Jacob is, uh, is he a critic or a friend to you? He's a friend, definitely a friend. Friend and supports, right? Uh, That's right. Yeah. Support one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the best way, probably, Wolf, because, um, because, uh, I know there are some, some duet um, groups who, who struggle, who fight over who is going to lead the the performance, right? Do you fight with each other? No, not really. We mm -hmm. um, we just take it uh, one step at a time, basically. Like, um, one might start the concert out, or we might do this, or whatever. Um, we organize it pretty well, and it turns out pretty fun. It's very enjoyable to do. Mm-hmm. And in today's uh, organist world, when everybody is playing um, similar works, uh, right, by master composers, you can differentiate yourself by playing something different, right, with Jacob. Oh, yeah. and, and it's, it's I think, a very creative way to think about going forward in your yeah, profession. All that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope you will explore this organ duo for a uh, repertoire even more and even you can arrange yourself like I did the uh, arrangement of the first Brandenburg concerto um, for four hands you know for the organ so you can take any type of symphonic music and you can rearrange it and with today's tools uh, with software and uh, notation software it's very um, very efficient and uh, quite easy to do this. You don't have to write everything out anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you only have to practice, of course. Practice is a big deal, right? When you do oh, yeah. come to... Trying to so organize when, together, yeah. When you... Uh, tell us this. Um, when you practice with uh, with Jacob together... Do you master your separate parts first, and then go to go go ahead and play together, or you or you practice uh, everything uh, at once and uh, side read the piece basically together? What's uh, I think we do a little bit of both actually. Sometimes um, I think mainly we like to take it separately, but I think we like to do both sometimes and have fun with it. Um, and sometimes um, in certain recitals we have done like half and half of the program. Like Jacob does the first half, I do second half where we can switch it around and um, make it a good hour long show or half hour long show, you know, 
We put all mm-hmm. of our pieces together and organize a cool recital, I like to call it. <laughs> Do you also play separately, solo, during these uh, uh, joint recitals? Yes, we do sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's it's wonderful for the audience to have a break between two hands and four hands, right? Mm-hmm. Two performance, uh, two performers sound differently than one, right? One oh, performer yeah. probably will not sound like an orchestra, but two performers might really uh, sound like a symphonic orchestra. Two men, one king of instruments. <laughs> Right, 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 right. Wonderful. So I'm very glad you are pursuing this organ duet path in your career. It, it, I think it's well worth the effort. And you wrote uh, that you enjoy improvisation, right? I do, yes. It's a lot of fun. Can you, can you talk a little bit? Uh, why do you love improvisation and, and uh, what's the most enjoying part in this Creating music creating in the moment. Yes, creating music in the moment is the, probably the coolest thing you could ever do. Um, mm-hmm. I've studied a lot of things in observation and from composers like Daniel Roth. He's actually one of my favorites because he makes so many majestic um, improvisations on the organ and it's fun to learn how he does it and how to make one sound like that. Another one is uh, Pierre Cochrane from Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was he was quite a character with the improvisation. He knew his stuff. Like he was one of the big masters. Um, in regards to Museum Notre Dame, he I'd say he was a master of his own instrument there because he uh, helped build one of the uh, the old organ there. I think didn't he? Yeah, he did. Mm-hmm. And it's really fun to study on basis of like soft meditation from chants, stuff like that, or sorte, preludes, a communion, all that stuff. It's really fun to learn about and try to come up with my own creativeness in making symphonies or pieces just like that. Like is a scarce symphonic or what have you. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Those great masters like Pierre Cochero and Daniel Roth are great examples that we have today. And the YouTube, is, YouTube is a wonderful place to go and study the masters, right? Mm-hmm. So I wish you all the success in your uh, creative endeavors and creating music under your fingers and feet right in this moment, right? In the church, when, when the live audience is witnessing the birth of, of, of previously... Uh, undiscovered composition, right? But you are creator. So thank you so much, Wolf, for today's conversation. It was a lot of fun uh, for me to connect with you and to know more about your practice methods, uh, about your uh, favorite composers, about your professor, of course, and all those things. So uh, before we end this conversation, can you tell our listeners a link where they can find our... uh, you and your work online. Oh yes, you can go on Facebook and type in Von Rose. That is my solo work page. If you want to find two shamans, you can type in two shamans on Facebook. And I also own another page called Grand Tour Magnifique. There you can see all kinds of organs and learn about the instruments and appreciation to that very thing. Great. And also, and a YouTube channel too. Yes, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, uh, you I- can go there. For uh, Grand Tour Magnifique, I don't use it very often, actually, but I'm going to start using that. So mm-hmm. hopefully you can find that and have fun with it. <laughs> Great. Uh, you probably will send me the links, right? Uh, Facebook, YouTube, and other links. And I will make sure to include them into the description of this podcast conversation so that people could literally click on the links and visit you online. Yes, I will do okay. that. So thank you so much. You have tremendous creativity this year. Practice bravely, perform freely, and uh, uh, let me know when something new comes up in your, in your uh, organ world. Thank you so much, Wolf. No problem. Anytime. Thank you very much for having me. If you liked this conversation, I encourage you to visit my blog, Secrets of Organ Playing, at organduo.lt 
you will find lots of insights, practical advice and training for every area of organ playing. You can subscribe to this blog for free to get your daily dose of inspiration and to be the first to know when any of my future podcasts roll out. I hope to help you reach your dreams in organ playing. I'm Vida Spinkavichus. Thanks for listening and I'll catch you online really soon.